Hi everyone, in this video we're going to be looking at how to use the construction lines add-on for Blender and we're going to be working on a real project which I think is a great way to look at the tools in action and give some context as to how they work in conjunction with Blender's native tools. Now if you don't have construction lines already I've put links in the description below to Blender Market and Gumroad. There's a small fee to support development, but once you've paid once, that's it. You get all the upgrades for free. Now, I'm not going to assume anything but a, a basic working knowledge of Blender. There are chapter marks in the video, so if you do know Blender well and you know how to install add-ons, etc., you can skip through those. So the first thing I'm going to do is show you how to install the construction lines add-on. So we fire up Blender. And we go to Edit Preferences. And in the left hand section here, we select Add ons and click the Install button. Then, if you navigate to where you've downloaded Construction Lines 2, you should find your Construction Lines zip file. Now, the only things that might be an issue here is if the zip file is named something other than what you're seeing here. So we have construction lines underscore and then the version number. If it's anything other than this, if it's just construction lines or some other name, then it may be that Blender Market or Gumroad have wrapped it in their own zip file. So that will need to be extracted. This has happened in the past. I've not seen it for a while, but it's worth keeping an eye out for that. Now Blender, add-ons are installed from the zip file. So there's absolutely no reason to extract the files within, just install the zip file. Select that and we press install add-on. You'll notice that I've got two construction lines here. This is a development sheet machine, so don't worry about that. And then if we just select enable the add-on here, and you'll notice that the construction lines icon is now in the tool menu. If I drag this window out, you can see that these are also where you find the preferences for construction lines as well. And you have things like the default tool that will start up as you start in construction lines. You've got keyboard shortcuts, um, interface colors, and various sizes and snapping options that you can go through and set those. As a final check, just to make sure that construction lines is working, you click on the construction lines icon and this toolbar should display down here along with the tips section. So before we start modeling anything, let's get familiar with the construction lines tool set. We'll go through each of these tools briefly below, and most of them will be used extensively when we build our model so they become a lot more clear how they work and when to use them. Our first tool is the Select tool, and it's similar to Blender Select with a few extra features. Clicking to select will simply select an object and you can shift select for multiple selections. You can box select as well. So anything within the box will be selected and if you draw from right to left, anything the box touches will be selected. So left to right, to select it has to be completely within the box and right to left just has to be touching the box. Now, if you're new to Blender, there are two main modes when you're modeling. There's the object mode, which is for laying out. So you can move objects around you can scale them, you can rotate, but you can't affect the geometry inside as such. If you press tab, you'll enter edit mode. And in construction lines, we have this gray bounding box around whatever it is that you're editing. And this shows that you are in edit mode. And this is where you can actually affect each individual part of the geometry, so the faces, the vertices, and the edges. And construction lines can select any of these with the box select tool. 
the other way, we'll select all of these that the box touched, and we can start moving these around and playing and doing various bits of modeling with them. So that's the main select functions. If we tab back into object mode and we select our measure guide tool, this was the first tool that I created and it's what started the whole construction lines project off. Blender is a fantastic and powerful tool, but it doesn't have tools for easy, accurate modeling, which we need for CAD work. So my first tool was this measure tool, and it simply allows you to measure various dimensions of an object or any of the space. But more importantly, it allows you to set guides. So if I drag this guide out and I press X, for instance, to lock to the X axis, we can lock to any axis X, Y, or Z, or any direction with a shift and control. And I'm gonna type in 2000, I'm working in millimeters, so that is two meters. And now I have a guide that I can use for any of the other work that I'm gonna do, any of the other modeling. And this is really powerful because it means if I select my move tool, I can take this object from any point. I can start dragging it around in space, but I can snap now to these guide points. And this allows me to set out my models for accurate work. So I can continue my guides, can set more of these out, maybe on the y-axis I might want to set another guide, or I can drag a guide, a horizontal guide, from that guide edge as well and set things out that way. And that will work off of other geometry as well. So the next tool is the line tool. And again, this works very much like setting out guides. I can click any point in space. I can lock to an axis, whether that's X, Y, or Z. And I can simply start drawing lines. And this is something that Blender does not have natively. So it gives us that more CAD style way of working. So I start drawing out my lines. I can create basic shapes, connect them up, and it will automatically create a face where it finds a loop for me, which is really handy because we don't need to go into using Blender's tools to then select geometry and start creating faces. So I can also use the line tool to split geometry as well. So if I choose a vertex here, simply draw to another edge, edge center, you see that that, ed, that face now is split. And we can tell that because we, we have our edge center showing which of these dots in the middle of the faces. And that shows me that that face has now been split. And it doesn't just work on geometry that we've created with construction lines. If I hover over this default cube, press tab to enter edit mode, I can use this line split through and we see those faces have split. So the next three tools are the rectangle, circle and arc and they all work in a very similar way. So if I take the rectangle tool, I can start dragging the rectangle out and I can either set that by eye or I can type in a value. All of the tools in construction lines you can use values that you type in. Rectangles it's going to be two values for the length and the width. So you simply put a comma in the middle there. So I'm gonna make a two meter by three meter rectangle. So I'm gonna type 2000 for 2000 millimeters. And you'll notice at the top of the screen, you're seeing the values that we're entering. I'm doing 2000 by 3000, I'm gonna hit return. And there we go, we have a two, two meter by three meter rectangle there. And if I take my measure tool, Double check that, we've got a two meter by three meter rectangle. And with all of these tools, you can also use them in edit mode 
on any other object and they will split the face or add to the geometry if you draw outside of that face. So if I take this rectangle and I draw onto this surface, there we go, we've split the face. We've now got two, fa two faces that we've split. And in fact, we have three faces now because of the way it's split. And you'll notice that sometimes extra edges are created. And this is because of the way Blender works. We need these extra edges to tell Blender that the face can be split and to allow it to split that face. Circles work exactly the same way. I'm going to tab out now of edit mode, back to object mode, draw a circle with any radius that I like. And if I hold control and use the mouse wheel, I can increase and decrease the segments and also use the arrow keys to do this and set those that segment count. I can go all the way down to a triangle as well, just three. And set and build my circle there. Arcs, exactly the same. Draw out an arc. Set the bulge. And then, of course, if I use the line tool, I could join that into a full semicircle. And as I say, all of these tools can be used in object mode or edit mode. They can be used to split other geometry, add to other geometry. It doesn't matter if the, the um, geometry is created in, with Blender's normal native tools, everything works together. Let's take a look at the move and rotate tools. And these are tools that sort of extend Blender's own tools. And I do that with the snapping that you will have noticed, which again, although Blender has snapping, it's not as straightforward as the snapping and as automatic as the snapping in construction lines. So you'll notice we have light blue snap for faces, green for vertices, purple for edge centers and blue for the edges. And we'll also be snapping to the global axes as well and to any guidelines. With the move tool in construction lines, unlike Blender's move tool, is you can pick a start point where you actually want to start your move from with a snap. So I'm going to pick this corner of the rectangle here, start moving around, and it means that I can then snap this exact point to any other piece of geometry whether that's just on a face or a vertex or an edge or one of our guides, but up here at the guide. And a really, really powerful feature that's been added recently is if I press S to select this object, this cube, select my move tool, start moving this cube. I'm gonna press control and that's going to duplicate that object. If I press X, I lock to that X axis. I'm going to set that down somewhere. Now, if I type divide, and if I divide by three, that is going to give me three, a distribution of three objects within that space that we've copied. So this is a great way to easily duplicate objects and space them out nicely with exact distances. And again, if I drag one of these cubes again, in this case, I'll lock to the Y axis, press control to duplicate. Set this a little bit closer just to keep it on the screen. And then instead of using divide, I'm just going to use a number on its own. I'll go for four. And there we go. That extends that duplication out by four. And we're going to be using this quite a lot in the modeling that we're going to do a little bit later. So the rotate tool works with snapping as well. So I can pick a start point. This is going to be my sort of axis of rotation. I then choose the plane of rotation that I want to work on, whether it's the Z, X or Y. I'll stick with Z in this case. I pick another point along that plane. Here we go. I can rotate around. I can type a value in. Maybe I go for 90 degrees. 
hit return and there we go and i find that a far easier way to rotate than blenders tools which either rotate around the origin of the geometry or you have to set up the position of the 3d cursor or set the origin on its own this does everything automatically I also recently added this extrude tool and it extends Blender's own extrude because it allows you to cut through geometry which Blender's extrude doesn't really allow you to do. So I'm going to select this cube here, press tab and in this case I'm going to choose half a rectangle I'm going to draw a rectangle on this face to split this face because I want to cut this rectangle out. Select extrude and select this face. I'm going to drag that all the way through through the back. Doesn't matter how far you go this way. Once you get through the back, it's just cut a hole through it. There we go. We can look through and we've cut that through, which is really handy for modeling things like windows and doors or architectural work. And I, I'm going to use that in the model that we're going to build a little bit later. We can also simply extrude as we would in Blender's own tool, just dragging out different faces. Okay, so we've gone through an overview of the main tools. There's a lot more to them. And in the manual, which again, I will link in the description below, there's a lot more detail about how to use each tool and the various options on them. Final thing I quickly want to go through is the N panel, this tool panel. If you press the N key, it shows and hides this panel. If we go down to CL, that's construction lines. For anyone that had construction lines before this version, 0.9.63, all of these preferences would have been in the tool tab, but they are now in their own tab, CL. And this just gives you options for the different snaps that you want to use. Some of them you might not want to, you don't always want to snap to the directions or the grid, for instance, so they can be turned on and off. And in this latest version, we now have grid snapping and grid subdivision snapping. So if I press five, and seven for plan view, orthographic, we'll see that we are now snapping to the grid and if i turn on subdivisions we snap to these grid subdivisions as well which is a really really handy way of modeling it makes life a lot easier and quicker for modeling things if you know exactly what your grid spacing is for some things it is a fantastic way to model without having to set guides or anything like that i put a quick access to the units which you can set in the scene settings here. I work in metric, if you work in imperial, you set that here, and then you can set your length. I work in millimeters, because I need that kind of accuracy, but you can easily switch between those in this quick axis. Then we've got the guide dimensions. If I go over to this section, you see these persistent displays for dimensions, which can be really handy when You've set out a lot of dimensions and you're trying to remember what dimension is what, but also we can turn these on and off as we need them. Sometimes if you're getting really close, they can get in the way for a little bit, so you can turn those off. And then we have the tip box down here, which gives you a, a guide on each of the tools as you're using it, how to show you how you would use that tool, but that can also be turned off if you're a bit more familiar with those tools. So now that we've gone through all of the tools, I think it's time to start building our own model to show how these tools really work. I'm gonna quit construction lines just for a second and clear the scene. I'm gonna draw around everything here, apart from the camera. I'm gonna hit X, delete. Okay, so we've got a nice clean scene here. I'm gonna work in plan view, so I'm gonna hit five, for orthographic mode and then seven for plan top view. And you can do exactly the same using this widget up here and changing 
the camera, orthographic, and perspective up here. So let's fire up instruction lines. I'm going to use the Alt and the Accent Grave key. You can also use the button here, but I find that quicker. And we're going to set out this room. So the project we're going to build is a recent project that I did. It's simple. It's a bookcase in a room. And it's a single shot that I need, so I don't need to build all the detail in all of the room, but just one corner. But it's a great way to show off how these tools in construction lines work. So let's set the room out first. And I'm going to do that by choosing the measure guide tool. I'm going to start at the origin. I'm going to start dragging out the direction that I need. Now I've got a five meter wall to work with. Press X to lock on this axis and know that I'm absolutely working on this X axis. And I'm going to type 5,000, 5,000 millimeters. There we go, there's our five meter wall. And the width of the room is four meters. So I'm going to drag out 4,000. There we go. Now, I also am going to drag horizontal guide across here to the end of the room and I'm going to drag in drag in another horizontal guide by 2000 millimeters so this should give me three meter space here which is exactly what we want this is where the bookcase is going to go and then this wall sort of kicks out here by 700 millimeters 700. Okay. So let's draw this section of wall. And I'm going to leave these walls off for now because it's far easier. I can just work in this corner without having to constantly turn the walls on and off and have them get in the way. Let's choose the line tool. Again, I'm going to start at the origin. I'm going to drag all the way across to this guide point that we've set. So I know we're on five meters. I'm going to drag up type 200 because that's the thickness of our walls on the outside. Drag across, press X to lock on the X axis. And I know we're going to go to five meters, but I also want to come past for the thickness of the wall. And I can use the grid snapping for this to five 200 here. Do exactly the same. Drag down using this grid snapping, which is so handy to use now. Drag that in. Or up to this origin again. And there we go, there's our wall, and that's nicely filled in by construction lines. And we have our wall set up. Now, I've just remembered we need to fill this section of wall where it kicks out a bit, and I'm going to use a rectangle for this. Take the rectangle tool, Snap to this three meter point here and drag that rectangle out. And construction lines will now have added and connected those bits of geometry together. Now, all I need to do is select all of those walls. And a new feature in the latest version of construction lines is that you can now select multiple faces and extrude them at the same time, whereas you had to do it one by one before. So now we can multi extrude. So I select my extrude tool, click on the faces, and I'm going to drag those up. And I know that my room is 2.6 meters, so 2,600. And there we go. There is our corner of room that we're mainly going to be working with here and we'll add the rest in afterwards that's a quick case of extruding these walls out and finishing that room off final thing i want to do on the room is to add our window in so i'm going to drag a horizontal guide from this wall here i'm going to drag this across by one meter and Drag another horizontal guide across by 1153.8, which is what the um, window width was measured at. I'm going to drag up 900. 
and the height of the window looking at my notes is 1095.5 we go and because we've set these guides now i can take a rectangle i'm going to make sure that i'm in edit mode if you're in object mode and you draw a rectangle on the top all you're doing is creating a new rectangle object you're not affecting this geometry so i need to be in edit mode to affect that geometry and actually cut into it i'll snap to these guide points see we've got these extra edges which is normal i'll take my extrude tool and i'm just going to cut that straight through and there we go we have a window opening there which will drag in a window later and we put that in Okay, so that's our section of wall done here. I'm going to tab back into object mode and I'm going to select that object, scroll down till I find it. Maybe it's this object here. I'm going to drag that into my building folder. Let's make sure that turns on and off. There we go. I like to organize my outliner like this. I can add new collections. And I find this for me is a great way to lay things out. You can do it however you would like. Um, anything you create, you can put into folders and rename. In this case, I'm going to name these the walls. And it just means I can turn any of these on and off and clean up the scene so I can work on this in a much easier way, much clearer, cleaner way. Okay, so let's clear out these guides. We don't need these anymore. I'm going to right click and I'm going to hit remove all. A nice clean scene now. And we can start building the bookcase. Now the bookcase is split into two sections. We've got the lower section, which is deeper, and then an upper section, which is a taller, narrower section with shelves in. And the lower section has got some doors on there. So let's start building that lower section first. I've chosen my rectangle tool, you can press R to do that. I'm going to start dragging out a rectangle here and I'm going to type 50 by 600. That's the dimensions I want for that side. And I'm going to press E to extrude. I'm going to start dragging this direction. Now the height to the top of the base is 800 and we've got a 50 millimeter top so i'm going to go for 750 on these sides and this is where the move and duplicate comes in really handy because i can drag this side now press control hit x to lock to the x-axis duplicated that side really nice and easily. And I'm just gonna double check. I like to constantly check that my dimensions are correct. Yes, we're in that three meters that we need to be within. And then I'm gonna press R again. Let's top on. E to extrude. Break this up and type 50. That's how 50 millimeters. And I might quickly just put a plinth section in as well. Go and extrude up again. That plinth is going to be 50 millimeters. And apart from the doors, that is the main lower section done. I'm going to choose the rectangle tool again, drag from the corner, and in this case, I'm going to do 50 by 300. Go extrude, drag this one up. Not quite to the top because we're going to put a bulk head in and I'll show you why that is later. So I'm going to need to leave a bit of space and I'm going to go for, what have we got here, 1800. So I'm going to go for 1650. So we've got a, a 150 space above the top. So the carpentry company that I work for wants to put a bulk head in the top and then run a coving or cornice around the front of the unit so they felt the bulkhead would be the best way to go on that so that's what we're going to do let's select this side i'm going to press g for grab the move tool control again we've got our top section in 
rectangle tool for a top 50 tap into edit mode and then I'm going to move this down space here there we go now I need to put a back on the unit so easiest way to do that is to clear the walls out for a minute and I'm just going to uncheck that so I can work on the back of the unit and I'm going to put a rectangle again drag that over a little bit closer for the snapping go. I'm going to extrude that by 12 millimeters let's just put that back into place there Y axis, there we go. Perfect. Let's fill the shelves in and dividers in a bit. Let's work on these doors. So I'm going to use the rectangle tool to build the doors, and I like on the doors to keep a three millimeter space all the way around. So I'm going to measure this space here, which is two nine hundred. I'm going to take away all of the three millimeter spaces around so we're going to have six doors so we'll have seven of those three millimeters so if i type in two nine hundred minus 21 for those spaces and i'm going to divide that by six doors and that gives us four seven nine point eight roughly it's good enough to work with choose rectangle tool and we're going to type 700 for the height here and it was 479.8 and there we go there's our door i'm just going to extrude that out i'm going to go for a 25 millimeter door there move that door along on the x-axis by three millimeters and I'm going to push that back in on the Y. Now to space these doors out correctly, because we're going to use that duplicate tool again, I'm going to use the tape guide tool. And I'm going to drag out a three millimeter guide here. I'll select the door, move, drag that over to the three millimeter mark, press control for a duplicate. I'm going to click to set that. And then I'm going to type in five. And we now have our six doors. Now, really, really handy feature in Blender is the ability to link objects after you've created them. And in this case, it can be really useful because I didn't leave the three millimeters gap at the top and bottom. So I'm going to exit construction lines for a second, select all of these doors. And I can either go up to the object and link section, or I can press Control and L, and I'm going to link object data here. And that's going to link all of these objects together so that they're going to, whatever you do to one will happen to the others. Let's go back into construction lines. And I'm editing one of these box select, select all of the top geometry, and I'm going to grab along the Z axis, I'm going to go down six for that three millimeter spacing. Then if I press S to select, select all these doors again, grab along the Z and move up three. And there we go, we've got our perfect three millimeter spacing around everything. So if you come from a SketchUp background like I do, um, the linking tool is like a component. So anything you do in one affects all the others. But what's really handy here is you can turn that on and off. You, I could now go back and unlink these doors. And then later on, if I needed to do something else, I could then link them again or just link a couple of them, depending on what it is that I wanted to do. It's a really, really handy feature there. So finally on this unit, we're going to need to build the dividers between the shelves and then build the shelves themselves. So I'm going to get close to this corner. I'm going to snap to this 
point. Sometimes it can be a touch tricky just to get that exact point. Go. Okay. I'm going to go 50 by 288 because we've got that 12 millimeter back on. Go okay. and I'm going to extrude that divider up. And then if I tape across, we've got 2900 again. And I need to have four sections in this. So that's going to be 2900 minus the 350, so minus 150. And we're going to divide that by four, which gives us 687.5. Select this and we'll move on the X. 687.5 and then to duplicate these we do exactly the same as we did with the doors take the measure tool I'm going to press X to lock that 687.5 select this again G to grab control to duplicate it's going to times two on that so we now have our or even space. And finally, let's pop our shelves in. And we're going to go for 25 millimeter shelves here. And if we just work out the divide, uh, the divisions on these shelves, so we are 1600. And we're going to go for four shelves, so five divisions. So 1600 minus 100 of the four shelves divided by five spaces, we have 300. Let's grab this up on the Z, 300. Perfect. Do exactly the same. So the guide point, 300. Select this shelf, grab. Select the lowest point, snap to that guide, and I'm going to type in three for three extra shelves. And there we go, we've got these perfectly laid out shelves now. And if I select all of them, press the grab tool, control X to lock on this axis, I'm going to times by three. And there we go, let's turn our building on. And we have our bookcase in the corner. We can start building out the rest of the room. Let's quickly pop that bulkhead in with the rectangle tool. That's done. Extrude that up, take that to the top. And then I want to put a floor in. Rectangle across here. And then we can extrude these walls out. So if I just hover over the wall here, press tab, E to extrude, I'll extrude this one out by 200. Extrude this corner, extrude again by 200 for the wall thickness. And I can just extrude this to finish off the room. Now, obviously, if we were doing more renderings in the room, I'd put a doorway in. If there were windows over here, I'd put those in. But in this case, I'm going to be shooting our camera from around this direction, lower down. So we're never going to see the door. So I'm not going to worry about what's over here for now. What I like to do at this stage is start to set the camera up and get the lighting ready for rendering. So I'm going to get roughly into the position I'm going to shoot from and making sure you, you do actually have a camera in the scene. If you don't, quit construction lines for a second. Shift A and you can add a camera in. And then to align the camera with, with this view that we're currently in, we do Control, Alt and Zero. And that gives us this direction that we're in. So I select this camera. And I'm going to just change from 50 millimeters to I'll go for 35 in this case. I'm going to start zooming this out a little bit. And you'll find that we come directly into this wall, which this took me a while to work out that we could do this. 
But a really handy feature in Blender is you can set the clipping on the camera. So if I drag this clip start up, it means that I can shoot through the wall, but it's not going to affect the final render at all. The light won't be affected. It's not creating a hole. It's just allowing us to sort of look through that wall. And then I'm going to move the camera to the sort of position that I want to get the whole unit in. I have in my quick favorites lock to camera view. You can also do that up in the view sections and you can lock that camera to the view and that will allow you to rotate the camera as you're working. So I'll turn that off now and I'm just going to go into my item and make sure that the camera is nice and square. And I'll move that down just a little bit. In fact, I might move that to 1600. There we go, perfect. So there we have it. We have built a room, we've built our construction, our joinery, carpentry work here, and this is all ready for lighting and rendering. And we'll dress the room up here. And hopefully you can see just how easy it is to build this kind of thing with construction lines. Very short period of time, but we've built an accurate model that when we show a customer, we know that this is built correctly to scale with the exact dimensions that we have been given. And if you come from software like SketchUp or Fusion or any of those pieces, you'll be used to this way of working. And you can now use those ways of working alongside the incredible power of Blender, which if you've not used Blender much before, you'll be able to see a small part of that just through the rendering that we're gonna do so I've set my camera up and I'm going to add some lighting in now. Just control A, light, put an area light in, drag this out. I'm going to go through this quickly as this isn't a rendering tutorial. I'll show you quickly how I would render this scene. I might skip through a, a few bits or speed them up in the video. Um, and in the comments, if you want to know a bit more, then just let me know and I can, I can go through those. I'll increase the power to 5,000. This is going to be our sun. One for th front view. Tate. And grab this. And I'm going to rotate. That's our bookcase. For zero to go back to the Bookcase, I grab that sun up just a little bit so it hits the bookcase. So we haven't got a ceiling on, but I know that that light now is coming through pretty much where I want it to hit the bookcase, and I can start working with that now. Let's quickly put in ceiling, rectangle tool. There we go, there's our ceiling. Yeah, there we go. So perfectly the light we've got hitting that bookcase exactly how we want it. Now when we add in the sky and we add in our down lights into the room, this is going to work nicely. So I'm going to speed this section up now and I'm going to put, I'm going to dress the room, I'm going to put some textures on. But as I say, if this is the kind of thing you're interested in, you want to see a bit more about, you've maybe not done it before in Blender, let me know in the comments and I can release another video showing exactly how, how I've done this but I don't want to spend too much time on it in this video as this is mainly to show how we model with construction lines rather than how we use Blender.
So this is by no means a perfect rendering, but I hope that it's demonstrated how you can use construction lines to very quickly create models that are accurate, that can then be sent for rendering. Now in the next video, I'm going to be looking at how I created the coving and the skirting baseboard in this video. And it's a great technique being able to draw the profiles with construction lines and then using Blender's own curve tools to copy that profile along a fixed path. If you're familiar with SketchUp, it's just like the Follow Me tool, but a lot more powerful. And I'll go through all that in the next video. So thanks very much for watching and I'll see you in the next video. Please don't forget to press like on this video and subscribe.